Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. Another great presentation today. We're going to teach you everything about mineral corticoid synthesis and the actions. Very, very important hormone. Yesterday we talked about glucocorticoid hormones and the synthesis, but today, my friends, it's all about mineral corticoid synthesis and this actions. Okay, so let's go back and let's go back to the how this is produced. I mean, uh, we have to go back to the brain, look at the hypothalamus and the pituitary, anterior pituitary, right? So you got um, hypothalamus, you got corticotropin releasing hormone, which is CRH, that going into anterior pituitary, you got ACTH, and ACTH go to the adrenal gland, and all those can be stimulated. Okay, but it's it's not a very big mechanism in there because the other two major mechanism is like angiotensin 2 and the potassium in the production of aldosterone. But ACTH also has a role in it, but doesn't control the secretion. Okay, so it's very important to know. So we're going to talk, teach you all about the aldosterone and the potassium and how does it uh, produce uh, all, I mean angiotensin 2 and the potassium, how does it make the aldosterone, okay? And now we have something called renin, which is actually produced by the just dexa glomerular cells of the kidney. That acts on this angiotensinogen, which is actually produced in the liver to make angiotensin 1, okay? And then with the help of angiotensin converting enzyme, angiotensin 1, uh, to make angiotensin 2. That's converted into angiotensin 2. That is plays a bigger role. They come up here and the last step in the corticosterone conversion to aldosterone, there's an enzyme called aldosterone synthase. And that activate this enzyme, so aldosterone is produced. Okay, now we also have to look at what happens over here, like cholesterol. Okay, so ACTH, because of the stimulation of cholesterol desmolase, cholesterol is converted into pregnenolone. And then, with the help of 3 beta hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase, is converted into progesterone. The progesterone is converted into 11 deoxycorticosterone by 21 alpha hydroxylase. And then the 11 deoxycorticosterone is converted into corticosterone by 11 beta hydroxylase. So make sure you know all these enzymes, very, very important. We're going to come back in details, kind of talk about, you know, some of the pathology associated with it later. And the final step is you got the corticosterone is converted into aldosterone, which is by the aldosterone synthase by, I mean, this is stimulated by angiotensin 2. Okay, and the other two stimulant is the direct stimulant is the potassium also. So three stimulants are there. One is ACTH, which is in a small amount, doesn't control the, secre the rate of secretion. The main thing is aldosterone and the potassium. Those are the two main important things. Now we have the aldosterone produced and let's, select, let's look and see what are these action. Number one, you know, they had to know about is increased blood volume, right? How does it increase the blood volume? There's like several steps there. First, it promotes the sodium reabsorption. There's a pump up here, this kind of stimulate that sodium reabsorption, okay? Once the sodium absor absorbed into the cytosol, it pumped out into the blood by sodium potassium ATPase pump. So, I mean, so when this pump up here, potassium kind of come back into the uh, cytosol, create a gradient and potassium start leaking into the urine. So that causes like hypokalemia, increased potassium excretion. Okay, now we have to know this is the principal cell of the collecting duct. That's what this action is taking place. Okay, remember that. And then when you come to the intercalated cells of the collecting duct, you have um, acidification of the urine happens. Okay, that create alkalization in the blood because you got I mean, you got the hydrogen ions are excreted out with the help of XeO3 uh, chloride uh, pump. Okay, remember that. And it also causes stimulate the sodium potassium transport in sweat glands, salivary glands, and interstitial epithelial cells. Okay, got it. Now let's go back and just I'm going to take a step back and kind of understand what's happening up here. I mean, three things can stimulate the aldosterone, which is the mineral corticoid. What are the three things? One is ACTH, not as much. The second is like angiotensin 2, okay? The third thing is the potassium. 
Those are the three main stimulants to produce the aldosterone. Now let's look at how does angiotensin II produce. We got renin in the gestaglomerular cells of the kidney that kind of act on this angiotensinogen which is actually produced in the liver and then angiotensin 1 is produced and by angiotensin converting enzyme angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2 okay and that angiotensin 2 come and, and act on this aldosterone synthase converting the corticosterone into aldosterone that's a major step here, because of the ACTH role, cholesterol start converting to pregnenolone, pregnenolone is converting to progesterone, and then 11 deoxycorticosteroid, I mean corticosterone, and you got corticosterone, and then finally aldosterone is produced. Okay, so don't forget the potassium also. And again, aldosterone is produced in the sauna glomerulosa. Remember that. So those are the three things, major thing in this side we have to know. And when we come over here, we're just looking at the action. Where does the action take in place? Collect induct, okay? You have to look at the what's happening in the principal cell, and then you have to look at what's happening in the intercalator cell. So what happened in the um, principal cell is, you got sodium re reabsorption over here, okay? Sodium, more sodium come into the cytosol, and then it's pumped out into the blood by sodium potassium ATPase pump. When the sodium get pumped in, pumped out, potassium pumped in, that create the gradient and the potassium excreted. So what's going to happen? You got hypokalemia because increased potassium excretion. Okay? So when you have more sodium absorbed, your blood volume is going to go up because water get reabsorbed. With it. Remember that. And then also there is like, I mean, there is loss of H+. Plus. So that make the blood more alkalinized. So alkalinization is going on. And the third is stimulate the sodium potassium transport in the sweat gland, salivary glands, and the interstitial epithelial cell. That's all my friends about mineral corticoid synthesis. Um, we'll be back with another presentation soon. Please subscribe to our channel and study hard. Thank you so much.